In this video, we're going to take a look at some proportionality theorems that involve triangles. The first one says that when a line that is parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other side, it's going to divide the other two sides up in such a way that they are in proportion. So in other words, what this is saying is that because this segment TU is parallel to the side of the triangle QS, then the two pieces of side QR so the green piece and the blue piece are going to be proportional to the two pieces of SU and UR. So there's a lot of different ways that we could write this proportion, but we could say that the ratio that compares length QT to TR is equivalent to the ratio that compares length SU to UR. You could have done side Q or segment QT over segment SU is equal to segment TR over segment UR. That would be another way of stating the exact same proportion. So in the example off to the side where it says solve for X, I need to write a proportion that compares the pieces of the two sides that segment Q or ST splits. So 2 is to 6 as X is to 9. Or if I had wanted, I could have said 2 is to x is 6 is to 9. Either way is correct. So I'm just going to go ahead and cross multiply in order to solve. 6 x's are equal to 18. The value of each x then is 3. So that's the first theorem that you need to be aware of. The second one has to do with what happens or what occurs when a ray bisects an angle in a triangle. It says that when a ray bisects an angle of the triangle, then it divides the opposite side into two segments whose lengths are in proportional to the lengths of the, the other two sides. So in other words, in this picture, because ray CD bisects this angle, we know that if we compare the length of AD to its adjacent side in the triangle, that's going to be equal to the ratio where we compare the length of DB to the length of CB. And of course, I could have chosen to write this the length of AD over the length of DB equals the length of AC over the length of CA. Oh, and I have to go back and fix here because this shouldn't be CA. That other side in that triangle is side CB. So when I take a look at example two here, I've got this segment that's bisecting this angle, and that's important to notice. I can compare the length of AB, which is three and a half, to its adjacent side, five, is going to be equal to the same ratio when I compare X to its adjacent side, which is 12. So now if I go ahead and cross multiply, I find that five X's are equal to whatever 12 times three and a half is. So I'm going to go ahead and dig out my calculator. You should go ahead and dig out your calculator as well. So 5x's are equal to 42. Which is going to make the value of each x 8 and 4 tenths. So that's the second of the theorems that you need to be familiar with. And again, that one deals with an angle bisector. The last one doesn't deal with triangles so much as it deals with parallel lines. So as any time three parallel lines are intersected by two different transversals, what's going to happen is that the lengths of the transversals or the pieces of the transversals will be divided in such a way that they're in proportion. So in other words, we've got these three parallel lines that are going to be intersected by these two transversals. I'm going to make transversal M purple, and I'm going to make transversal N green. What that means is that the pieces of that transversal are going to be divided in such a way that they're going to be proportional. So in other words, if I compare the length of UW to the length of VX, that's going to be the same as when I compare the length of WY to segment XZ. And of course, there's a few different ways I could have written that proportion. That's just one of them. So in the picture here, again, I've got these three parallel lines, and that's important to know. Three parallel lines, two transversals, which I'm going to make green, and I'm going to make purple. 
So my proportion here, 8 is to 10 as 6 is to x, or I could have written 8 is to 6 as 10 is to x. That would be another way of writing the exact same proportion. So when I cross multiply here, 8x's are equal to 60. And then when I go ahead and do 60 divided by 8, I find that x is equal to 7.5. All right, so as always, I want you to, up at the top of the next page, think about what you've just seen and heard and kind of narrow your ideas down to what are the important takeaways, what are the important things that you need to recall from the video, and then see if you can apply what you've learned to answer the questions on page 17.